2024 is here and in just about seven months time, the Olympics will be taking over Paris. Now, there are promises of glory and glamour, but are the organisers sticking to schedule? Well, to talk all about this, I'm joined by Christophe Duby. He's the Olympic Games Executive Director at the IOC. That's the International Olympic Committee over in Switzerland which is in charge of overseeing all the editions of the Olympic Games. Christophe Duby, thanks for coming on uh, to speak to us uh, today. Now, we're going to look at the positive, but also some of the more concerning sides at this stage. I know that the IOC has been sending representatives to monitor the preparations, uh, and it previously said that it had a high amount of confidence in the organisers of Paris 2024. Seven months away, do you still feel this way? Oh, yeah. Very much so, and uh, first, thank you for, uh, for having me today. Uh, yes, we, we're feeling e exactly the same, and I would say that more than monitoring the, the works from, uh, from Lausanne, we're contributing as, as well to the uh, to de delivery of, of these games, and yes, indeed, we feel extremely confident. If we look at all the big markers, starting with the obvious, the constructions, they've been delivered. Uh, then if we move to operations, we had the test events last, uh, last summer and in the autumn, it worked very well. Uh, the athletes are, are stunned by the quality of the fields of play and the level of preparation in, uh, in, in all the bigger functions is also according to plans. Now, what is even uh, more uh, uh, important uh, is, is the fact that the public support uh, in France, but also internationally, is, is outstanding. Uh, the results for the ticketing at, at this stage, marvellous. Um, engagement throughout France, very high mark as well. And anyone we talk to in business, in, in arts, cinema, uh, anywhere, they want to be in Paris next year. So as you, uh, you introduced, uh, the eyes will be in Paris and, and the world will be in Paris next year. Well, the sites, as we know, are pretty much ready because only few sites are actually being built. Few new sites are being built uh, for the Olympics. Um, only in November, though, the uh, mayor of Paris, she did say that the works for the public transport that were planned will not be finished in time. Uh, how much of a worry, though, is this? Well, you know, the transport plan is, uh, is always something very complex in, uh, in the context of the games. And here are two, uh, two elements of response. First, you have uh, the, the transport plan that is by, delivered by the organizers themselves. It relies for you, media, and, and for many, uh, starting with the athletes, on buses and on, on cars. Uh, obviously, many of us will also move by public transportation, but this side of the plan is extremely well conceived and, uh, and, and will be delivered, including the Olympic route network, which will be very efficient. And then you have uh, the, uh, the public transportation, which we will also rely on, and many spectators and, and citizens will rely on. And here, Paris, uh, can I say, is very sophisticated in, in this respect. Now, the reason to be confident uh, here as well is that in uh, November, we met with, with all the agencies responsible to deliver the public transportation, and they are very integrated, knowing exactly what needs to be addressed, including information to participants, which can be quite overwhelming with, uh, with buses, trams, metro, RER, and all this will be consolidated in an app that, that will direct the, uh, the, the clients to, uh, to, to the right mode of transportation. So they know exactly where they are going. The, the plan is, is extremely clear. And again, we can be confident here. Well, speaking of uh, public transport, the monthly pass has just uh, gone up again uh, here in Paris. A single ticket also on the underground will be costing uh, about four euros during the games. You mentioned just earlier that there is that indeed uh, support from the French people, but at the same time, there are uh, people starting to see the flip side, perhaps, of uh, what it's like to be living in a, in a host city. What is the plan so that these people can embrace the games? Well, I think it's to, uh, to look at uh, the, the bigger picture of, of what the games will, uh, will deliver for, uh, for Paris and, and for the region. And uh, if we project ourselves back at the time, uh, there were a number of, uh, of objectives that, that were set and were very ambitious, and Paris is delivering on these, starting with, as you said, uh, very minimal but crucial work to be delivered, including in Saint-Saint-Denis with this uh, magnificent Olympic village, the swimming pool that, that will deliver its benefit long-term after the Games have, have passed. And the Games have, have allowed to create, 
as you know, many jobs uh, in, in the region and, and many of them will stay afterwards. So I would say that, that from a, a, an economic and social standpoint, the games have hit all the marks. The other reason to embrace is that these are truly games for, for everyone. Not everyone will get a ticket. There are only 10.5 million of them, which is already immense, but not everybody will get a ticket. And many of the competitions will be free of, of charge. As you know, the ceremony will be open as well. We'll have the live sites. So in other words, there is something for everyone in, in these Paris games. Uh, the, the promise that was made at, at the time is, uh, is fully delivered in this respect. Mm. Just to go a bit further on this point, um, maybe you've noticed it too, uh, but we're seeing definitely a lot of uh, graffiti, a lot of posters uh, from people who do oppose these games. Um, some people uh, talking about the effect that it, they'll have on locals afterwards, concerns about that, concerns about video uh, security. Um, what would you say specifically to these people uh, who are out there putting up these posters, who have these concerns? You know, that very specific one you, you, you just mentioned is um, a, a tool that is, that is needed for delivering what, what the world expects, which is safe games. And, and this is an event measure that is, that is being put in place. Um, at the same time, I, I do recognize uh, that a, a, in a project of this nature, being in, in Paris, uh, being in, uh, in Australia or in Los Angeles, you will always have oppositions. People have different views, but when it comes to the main idea, which is to assemble the world next year, um, uh, being uh, clever about the usage of, of resources, um, Paris has, has hit all the marks. So, yes, critics uh, have, have been raised, will be raised in, in the future, and, and this is normal. In any democracy, this is what happens. Uh, but in the main... Uh, really, the, these games are uh, in, incredibly well designed and, and delivered. So, uh, so this is done for the greater good of, of the community and that should be recognised because it's really the case. Mm, yeah, and of course that is crucial to having uh, safety at the games. Um, one of the other points though that people do point out is the gentrification that has often been brought uh, by the Olympic Games. Uh, London 2012 is of course a model for Paris. It wasn't that far away, uh, both in time and space. Um, that does have the massive gentrif gentrification tag uh, attached to it since. Um, can I ask you, what does the IOC do to ensure that the games do uh, benefit as much of the population as possible? Uh, first, gentr gentrification is, is uh, not an, an issue that, that you can uh, uh, attribute to, to the games. This is a social phenomenon that, that happens across the globe in, uh, in many of the cities, including here next door in, uh, in Lausanne. So uh, this is definitely a, a social phenomenon. Um, when it comes to uh, 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 the, the games themselves, um, uh, as, and as I said before, I think that the greater markers, the social markers, are incredibly Im important. And uh, uh, for anyone in the future, what, what needs to be done is to design the games for the benefits of, of the communities, including here in, in Paris, creating as many jobs as possible, that is, using the, the local economy as the, the main source for the delivery of the games and having as well very clear objectives set from the very beginning. And in Paris, it was for the benefits of Saint-Saint-Denis while using as, as well Paris Centre as the backdrop for the games. So that clear vision is, is what was needed at the time being delivered upon. And for the future, it's always the same example that, that we give. Whether the IOC can act on uh, uh, an issue like gentrification, certainly not at the core of it, because again, it's a social phenomenon everywhere. What we try to do is to hear everyone and make sure this is a platform where uh, uh, public debate uh, is, is being entertained. And, and many issues have been flagged and probably enlarged to a wider audience, thanks to the games, I would say, but not necessarily that the IOC could be solving all these issues. This is not what this organization is designed to do. What, however, we, we are always insistent upon is that the core mission of the Olympic Charter is being uh, uh, respected. And, and this is uh, that, that the world assembled at one point in time 
in one place and in full respect and in, in a peaceful atmosphere. All right. Well, one of the uh, biggest moments, of course, uh, from any of the editions of the Olympic Games is that opening ceremony. Um, Paris has decided that it wants to supersize uh, this one. For our viewers who may not uh, have heard yet, it's the first time that an opening ceremony will be taking place outside of a stadium. On paper, it sounds absolutely incredible. Boats going along the River Seine in the centre of Paris. Uh, but in practice, it's a bit more of a logis logistical conundrum. Is there a possibility, do you think, Christophe Duby, that uh, Paris may have perhaps set the bar a little too high? Nah, um, uh, speaking about the ceremony, I've got sparks in my eyes. Um, I've, I've seen things um, on, on paper which are outstanding. And I know one thing, it's going to be delivered. No doubt about that. Uh, you, have, you have an incredible creator behind the, the ceremony in, in Thomas Joly. You have uh, outstanding operators. Yes, it is big, no doubt. Is it complicated? Absolutely. Do they have the capability to deliver? 100%. And uh, you, you've heard uh, uh, the, uh, the, the prefect of, of Paris speaking about uh, the, the plan for, for that night, which is very sophisticated, a lot of manpower behind, meaning also uh, very detailed planning. And this is the same for transportation, and this is the same for FNB, this is the same for crowd movement. This is, yes, a massive undertaking. But at the same time, uh, over uh, the recent days, we had one million people on the, uh, the Champs-Élysées, and it worked extremely well. Uh, we have slightly less people attending to the opening ceremony, but those that, that have a ticket, including free of charge, imagine that family with, uh, with three kids having five tickets free of charge and looking at, at what is probably the biggest show on earth ever delivered live. I say this is pure magic. And it's the final countdown to that pure magic. Well, Christophe Dubuis, thank you very much uh, for taking, of course, the time to speak to us. We'll be following it all uh, here on France 24, so stay tuned for our coverage of the build-up to the Olympics. Bye-bye for now.